I'm eating an apple. You have to talk. What do, what do you want me to say? That was that. What? You 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 asked me if she's written in a lot. I can't say that because that's hell of a no, spoiler. No, talk talk about what happens <laughs> to the monsters. <laughs> Hello, mortals, monsters, and myth lovers alike. You're listening to Podcast of Poseidon. We explore how ancient myths become modern pop culture by reading Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is Chapter 18, The Grey Sisters. I'm your co-host, on loan from the Hunters of Artemis, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, hailing from Cabin 9, DJ. How's everybody doing today? Uh, if you don't know, Cabin 9 is Hephaestus. We've been hanging out with my brother, uh, Tim O'Connor, son of Hephaestus. Um, shout out to him. He's pretty cool. Yeah, he's one of our patrons. All right, well, before we get started, let's swing by the camp store to make sure we have everything we need for this episode. Hey, y'all, just me. DJ got caught up trying to figure out which Doritos we're going to make for this episode, even though the answer is always and only Cool Ranch. As you probably noticed, it's a new month, which means it's time for a new donation. Every month at Podcast of Poseidon, we donate $1 for every patron we have over on Patreon to a children's literacy charity. This month, we're donating to First Reader an organization that aims to create better learners, brighter futures, and stronger communities by providing quality books and literacy resources to children and their families to use at home during the earliest stages of development. Founded in 1999, First Readers has mailed over 7 million books to low-income families. We currently have six patrons, so we'll be donating an additional $20, making our total donation for this month $26. Thank you so much to our patrons for making this donation possible. And now, on to the show! All right, so DJ, this episode we are talking about the Grey Sisters, yet another yeah. spooky trio from Greek mythology. It's a lot of trios in Greek mythology. It's a lot of trios in Greek mythology. It's almost as if like three is an important number. Crazy. DJ, what do you know about the Grey Sisters, or maybe more specifically, what do you remember about the Grey Sisters from the Percy Jackson books? So from the Percy Jackson books, I know they give like they give fates. But not like, not like, not like the fates would give fates or like yeah. whatever, prophecies or whatever. They just give like information. Yeah, like really specific directions. Uh, really specific. Like they gave Percy uh, nautical coordinates. <laughs> Literal coordinates for the things Literal he needed. Literal coordinates. Like this is where you need to go. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Was the exact coordinates of the Golden Fleece. You know, like <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, they do show up later at the end of Trials of Apollo. Spoilers for anybody who cares. But it's really not much of a spoiler. Apollo gets into the Grey Sisters fan. He's not too stoked about that because they don't like him. No. <laughs> no, they, they ream, in, ream into him. And then he reveals, mm-hmm. no, they're just gossips. Like, if you don't if you don't participate in what they're trying, like, the whole time they're like, oh, we got this crazy information. And the whole time he's thinking, yeah, they just fucking, it's just like the next celebrity gossip. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I'm just not going to play this game with you. Uh, and I was like, oh, well, well, turns out it was another line of the prophecy <laughs> that he needed. So maybe don't be mis- dismissive of the weird cab driver, Apollo. Yeah. Well, like, in his defense, they are gossips. <laughs> like, what, his experience with them is, like, he would, before he would do, like, play their game and, like, would do whatever they asked to get the information. And it was just like, Dionysus likes grapes. <laughs> you know, shit like that. He's like, that's that. not information. I know that. But then they, uh. They 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 pop their own eye out to just sit on his lap. Gross. And he's like, I'm not touching your eye. And they're like, oh, he took our eye. He's a madman. I can't see. We're going to miss the camp. And blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'm not. You can just take your eye. Like, I'm not. He's got our eye. Oh, he's crazy. <laughs> Why? If you just give us our eye back, we'll, we'll tell you what we know. <laughs> so they just really want to gossip. And if you won't engage, oh, yeah. they'll do the eye thing. Yes. <laughs> i love that. percy played right into their hands like no, thinking he, back on it yeah. percy totally played into their hands like he, he took their eye yeah 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 he, he did I, I so i don't know if i ever mentioned this on the podcast i have only read the first two books in the trials of apollo series yeah, which means in the first time in ever in my whole life i am ahead of darian in a riordan thing but i still haven't read the kane chronicles which because, I have, so. Because Red Pyramid's not on there. <laughs> Red 
Red Pyramid is not on Audible, and I hate it. Yeah, that that does make it a little bit difficult for our audiobook boy. So I yeah. I'm delighted to learn this because I, I... no it's y'all it they was came fun. out during my they just they just came out during my lull in my Percy Jackson fandom. So I'm getting back into it, but now I'm wondering like, do I just wait until we cover on the podcast to read it like yeah, for the content for, for the, the content for the content? But like. I want to talk about it, and I don't know if I can really wait, like, four years until you get to it. (laughs) And can you wait four years? We've already discussed some of the events that happened in that because you had it spoiled for you. Can you wait four years, four to five years to get to it, Darian? Well, you said you cried. I fucking cried from book three on, dude. I was bawling the whole time. And see, that's not, like, a selling point to me. I don't like being sad. How? (laughs) How? I mean, they're all out, so I can just binge read them. Like, currently, I haven't read the latest two Shadowhunter books because I can't deal with the angsty cliffhangers, and I'll just binge them all when they're done. So, like, it'll probably be fine. That's anyway, fair. not what this episode is about. Not what this episode's about, actually. The episode's about the Grey Sisters. So let's, yes, so let's talk about what they do in, in Sea of Monsters because I know we have some of our, our audience hasn't read the book, and I want to make sure everybody's, like, got a context of, like, what we're referencing. Yeah. So we have the, the Grey Sisters who in Greek mythology are kind of these three reclusive ancient witches. They share one eye, literally, and one tooth. Literally. Also like literally. They, they, they pop the eye out and put it in their own eye to view yeah. it. Yes, they all just have empty eye sockets and one eye. What happened to the other five eyes? One, two, three, four. What happened to the other five yeah, eyes? Five eyes. <laughs> What do you you want to you want to count what happened to the other? Give me a second. Seventy one other teeth. What are there? Twenty four teeth in a human mouth. Right. Yeah, because there's like thirty six in a kid's mouth. Kids have so so many teeth. Kids have so many teeth. It's a little weird. Why? Are we looking this up? Maybe. This episode is off the rails right out the gate. How many teeth in the human mouth? Thirty two. Okay, so normal adult small. mouth has except for wisdom teeth not divided by three 96 so what happened to the other 95 teeth <laughs> <laughs> the world may never know who knows but in percy jackson they drive a cab and they do they drive a cab and it's i'm pretty sure it, it was a pitch black cab wasn't it that said gray sisters just on it or something i, I think it was i can reference the book it was a smoky gray cab that looked smoky like it was gray. woven out of smoke Mm, yeah, that's right. But they, they, <laughs> they, to summon it, they had to smash a drachma into the, into the asphalt, and it came out of that. I mean, what does Annabeth says? She says something about like, "Oh, come, oh chariot of damnation." Yeah, that's what it was, and uh, which is like pretty extreme. And fun fact: Meg McCaffrey loves riding in that cab. Has she ridden that's- in it a lot? Uh, yeah, actually, these are spoiler territories I'm getting into. All right, all right, look, we're, we're, we're not talking ass. about Meg anyway. We're, yeah, okay, you're we'll right. Circle back, I'm just saying, back. Apollo wasn't super stoked about it, Meg loved it. So they show up, and their cab actually flies and goes, like, faster than the speed of sound. As you do. As you do. So when they show up, Percy obviously is weirded out by it. You got these three ancient witches who have one tooth amongst them and one eye that just pops out lands on his lap and he's it's like super mm. sticky and just not coming off his hand yeah. until he hands it to them and it's like, like one oh, those sticky eye the things f- yeah one of those sticky eye things but he holds on to it until they reveal what they know about like the future for percy jackson which as we said before was nautical coordinates for the yeah. golden fleece like exact where he needs to go which is so funny to me and it turns out those coordinates are the bermuda triangle <laughs> yes it's that's where the sea of monsters is at it's just in the bermuda triangle yeah so they they mention oh yeah so they talk so annabeth is so they're driving they're driving to camp half like dj says they're going just faster than the speed of sound and it's reckless driving and percy is like why did we get into this cab this was a bad decision and annabeth reassuring him like oh don't worry they know what they're doing they're very wise and then one of their gray sisters, Anger, is like, oh, yes, we're very wise. We know things. Every street in Manhattan, Wasp Bragg is still hitting her sister, the capital of Nepal, the location you seek, Tempest added. Immediately, her sisters pummeled her from either side, screaming, be quiet, be quiet. He didn't even ask yet. And then Percy's like, what are you talking about? What location? Which goes to show they're a bit of a gossip. <laughs> yeah. 
They're like, we know all these things, including, did you know who Dionysus is crushing? Like, that's literally their whole bit. Yeah. Percy ends up with the eyeball, and he's like, I won't give it, they're like, give it back, give it back. And Annabeth's like, give it back, they can't see without it. He's like, I will let We are back. going to bypass the camp by several hundred miles. Yeah, yeah. It's also a funny bit that I do like in the book is that the sister with the eye is not the sister who's driving. And I find yeah. I find that just <laughs> hilariously dangerous. That's the person's like, good. I won't give it back until you tell me. And then they he gives him back the eye and then they give him this the exact coordinates or which I have right here. He's oh he's threatening to throw it out the window. Like that's what's happening. He's gonna throw the <laughs> eye out the window. Lose the eye. Yeah. Wait, the gray sister screamed. Thirty, thirty one, seventy five, twelve. He's like, what do you mean? I said, that makes no sense. They repeat the number. That's all we can tell you. Now give us the eye almost to camp. He gives the eye to get to camp. And then as DJ says, we find out later, Percy's like, oh, they're nautical coordinates to Polyphemus' island where the Golden Fleece is at and also just happens to be where Grover is at. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, of course he would know what fucking coordinates are later. Yeah. No, it makes sense. Now, if, if it, now here's the thing. It's a good thing it was, like, the Sea of Monsters because if it had been, like, the valley of monsters or something percy would have been useless because he can't do land coordinates yeah. can't, only he, water coordinates only water coordinates and only when he's out on sea not even when he's on a lake or a river it's got to yeah. be out on sea and he that's what, only when he can tell yeah yeah so dj what do you know about the gray sisters in regards to ancient greek myth i actually don't know much about them i know mm-hmm. Disney's Hercules used the Grey Sisters as as a stand-in for the Fates, <laughs> as we yeah, discussed. Yeah, they super did. Yes, as we discussed at great length during our the Fates episode, and also during our Hercules remit. Very bonus briefly episode, in available. our Her- Hercules episode. Yep, available to patrons at ten dollars plus. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's they. They basically have one major claim to fame in in Greek mythology. And that they are the ones that tell the hero Perseus where to find Medusa and where to find the weapons he needs to kill Medusa. Right on. We'll be referencing Edith Hamilton's mythology. We're revisiting that. Haven't been to her in a little while. So Hermes is the one that tells Perseus that he needs to go to the Grey Sisters, who are also referred to as the Grey Women, to find out where he needs to go next. Because for some reason, Hermes couldn't tell him that part. We have to go side questing. I always got to go side questing. Let's be real here. Mm-hmm. Yep. It can never be straightforward. I always got to find somebody to tell me something to go find somebody to tell me something to go find somebody. Yes. So in this case, this is this is the side quest that, or the weird RPG style tangent circle quest that Perseus gets from Hermes. This radiant personage told him that before he attacked Medusa, he must first be properly equipped, and that what he needed was in the possession of the in possession of the nymphs of the north. To find the nymphs' abode, they must go to the Grey Women, who alone could tell them the way. These women dealt in a land where all was dim and shrouded in twilight. No ray of sun ever looked on that country, nor the moon by night. In the Grey Place, the three women lived, all Grey themselves, withered with extreme age. These are strange creatures indeed, most of all because they had but one eye for the three, which it was their custom to take turns with, each removing it from her forehead when she had it for a time and handing it to another. So they get there and the nymphs don't want to... So I guess in their old age, instead of just handing it over, they start fighting over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like. That's a, that's a great point. Eventually, they get sick and tired of having to share all the time. Yeah. Which, as someone who ha- grew up with three siblings, I get that. Oh, no, 100%. Uh, which is why it was wonderful when we got Billy Hatcher in the giant hay. <laughs> Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg, the only uh, four-player game we ever owned on no. the GameCube with the four controllers. We could all play at once. No we, sharing we actually necessary. We owned a couple more four-player games, but we ne- it was never on the GameCube. We, and we the didn't only, have the controllers. And we didn't have the controllers for it. We always only had two controllers. And then PlayStation only had two fucking slots on their controllers. It's fine. Yeah, no. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, so if you haven't played Billy Hatcher, go play it. It's fucking great. Continue. We do a bonus episode. Can we do a bonus episode on Billy Hatcher? I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can somehow tie it into fucking mythology. Oh, I can. I. I'm sure, so like, good. if ever we touch down on Japanese mythology, I'm certain Billy Hatcher's fucking loaded with that. I bet. And if not, of... we'll tie it into Sonic somehow. I bet there's some sort of Greek mythology reference I can make from that. 
Oh, but yeah. not what this episode is about. Not what this episode's about. Okay, so here's what happens. Perseus rolls up. And then, in at least this version of it, he doesn't actually ask, Hey, can you tell me where I find the nymphs of the north that have this weapon that I need to kill Medusa? He... You just tell him. Yeah. Or maybe this is what Hermes tells him to do. But Perseus keeps hidden until he sees one of the sisters take the eye out of her forehead to pass it on. And at that point, he jumps out and takes the eye. 100% Hermes told him to do that. That's yeah. And he refuses to give it back. And until they, they tell him how to reach the nymphs. Which is, that's how it plays. That does sound like something that, that Hermes would do. But like, okay. I, but, I, I bet that if he went up and asked the Grey Sisters... They would have told him, but Herm's like, hey, man, you should totally go fucking take their eye. That's the only way they'll fucking tell you. Go do just it. Just for fucking laughs. Right, just for laughs. Come on. <laughs> that makes, that's a great point. Okay. Because my thing was, as we talked about during the Medusa episode in, in season like maybe one. Maybe Perseus was being a dick. Perseus does kill Medusa when she's sleeping. Like, he doesn't yeah. duel her. He does, like, attack her when she's sleeping. So, like. Under the guidance of other gods. Athena is the one that told him to do it. So it's also he's under the influence of godly advice, and that's not a place you ever want to be. Yeah, but if it, it's either take the godly advice or die by a godly hand. <laughs> Literally a rock at a hard place. I, I think you're right. I think it was Hermes just wanting to just fuck with the for, sisters. <laughs> for just wanting to fuck with the Grey Sisters for, for the vine. Yeah. We'll talk more about Hermes in a later episode, not, not too far <laughs> from now. Yeah, it's actually this but, uh, season, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yes, we are. We'll cover him. I don't know. Time is relative. We'll get there eventually. Eventually, you will be listening to an episode on Hermes, and I bet you only at a least deal. at least one episode from now, maybe five, maybe ten. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. Recording is ever in flux. Anyway, yes. so that's the. The Grey Sisters' participation in the Perseus myth is kind of, as I said, their one big thing. Mm-hmm. In my research, they don't really show up more than that, or they're they're mentioned, but that's that's really all they do. They're daughters of the sea deities, Forces and Cato. Cool. They don't do anything with right water, on. so I guess that gene yeah. isn't <laughs> hereditary. They, in uh, most, in the myths where they're mentioned, they typically are, as we see them in Sea of Monsters, hella, hella old. I saw one point, one source describe it as human childhood was hardly conceivable to them. <laughs> they just could not, they had no conception of ever being young. Yeah, they were just born old. Born old. Which kind of sucks, born with your fucking joints popping like Snap Crackle Pop Rice Krispies. I'm approaching 30, and my knees don't want to work anymore, so I'm done with it. I was I was approaching fucking 18, and my knees didn't want to work anymore. <laughs> like... Aging is terrible. Do not recommend. No. Zero out of ten. Don't recommend. We probably have some listener who's older than me is like, fuck you, you youths. Which is <laughs> right? fair. Which is fair. I don't, I don't blame them. No, no, no. Uh, Hesiod does describe the Grey Sisters as being fair-cheeked. Which, you know, fair is usually a term that means young and youthful. But it also kind of comes from, like, lily fair, which is lilies are white. So it could just be pasty as hell still and old. They're not gray, but I mean, they're they, still just, like, they don't get any sun. Like, they, I don't know, like, if, if they're gray, they could be a really, really pale, pale gray. We've seen that before in different myths. Like the color of my fucking baseboards. Yeah, there you go. Hesiod only names two of the gray, the well-clad Pintherdo and the saffron-robed Inyo. And Inyo. the first Pintherdo means alarm and Inyo means horror, the waster of cities. A later poet would mention Dino, dread, as another one of the gray sisters. Okay. So you may notice that is not what they were called in Sea of Monsters. Yeah, they were called uh, Anger, Tempest, and I don't remember the last one. Wasp. Wasp? Wasp. Not, like, the three of those just do not fit with each other. I don't know. Anger, Tempest, Wasps. 
I don't actually know either. I couldn't find a why. I couldn't find a why. But listen, if anything's not gonna match, I feel like tempest. Well, tempest means storm. Is that what tempest means? Yeah. Yeah. So you have the rage of a storm, just basically rage. You have anger and you have a wasp, and a wasp is the personification of rage and anger both. So wasp is just a dick. Wasps are dicks. That's your bingo See a card. Wasp killer Something on is site. a dick. K-I- a <laughs> K-I-S. Kill on sight. K-O-S. At Podcast of Poseidon, we want to save the bees, and we hate wasps. Yes. Just to clarify. We want to I save the bees. bees. Yeah, I mean, there's no other way around that. We want to save there's the bees. No... Save the bees, and wasps can fuck off. So the Grey Sisters. The Grey Sisters. There's not a lot to talk about them. Not a lot to tell. But no, not really. There are a lot of trios but... in mythology. There are, and since this is the third time that we are talking about a group of three on this podcast, the first two being the Fates and then the Furies. Why not? Yeah. Let's just talk about trios. Trios in pop culture, trios in anything. Yeah, let's talk about trios in in pop culture. We see this an awful lot in, uh, so obviously in ancient mythology, you'll find groups of threes. Many times in stories, you'll find typically, like, they must complete three tasks. You have three wishes from a genie, three fairy godmothers. Like, mm-hmm. three is a very important number. I do, because when I was researching, I saw a lot of times that the the three, the, the goddesses of three often, like, being put on the same, like, oh, you have the goddesses of three and you have the triple goddess. Me, personally, I would consider those to be very different entities, very different, like, story structure like yeah. archetypes because the triple goddess is usually a deity who represents in herself three elements three aspects mm-hmm. whereas these groups of three are are very often in at least in greek mythology that we're seeing just a group of three that don't really have super distinct personalities from one another like they kind of different things like the fates we talked about like one weaves the thread, um, you know, one, you know, starts it, one snips it. No, but it's, uh, one you... weaves it, weaves the tapestry of fate. Uh-huh. One cuts the tapestry of fate. Yeah. I know it's not starts. <laughs> That's just not right. God damn um, it. I know, right? We're gonna have to fucking go, but go to our notes. Go to the can we go to the show notes from season fucking one? Season one episode, I think like three or two. It says in the title, season one, episode two, or well, chapter two. Episode okay, chapter. so you have Clotho who spins the thread, spins Lachesis who weaves the destiny, and Atropos who okay. cuts it. Okay, so we brought yeah. the spinner. The spinner who makes the thread, and then mm-hmm. the one that weaves the tapestry of fate. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So they do different things, but they don't really. They aren't really different. So that's where I'd put. Uh, this is very unlike modern trios, that tend mm-hmm. to be the personalities are are pairing or they complement each other in one way or another. Yeah. Uh, DJ, what are what is what are some of your favorite pop culture trios? Since now we're just talking about the power of three. That's fair. I think right now the mo- the one that comes to mind would be the Adventure Zones, Taco, Merle, and Magnus. <gasps> oh, because you're listening to the Adventure Zone. Yeah, because I just finished I just finished Balance, and I'm starting on Amnesty, and I like it. Oh. It's fun. I like the characters. I just like I just like those guys a lot. <laughs> oh, it's so yay! That makes me so happy. Yeah. Yes, Taco, Merle, and Magnus are a great trio. I think. That one is because you have the McElroy family playing the game, and so there's four of them, and one has to be the DM, and then you have the three players. But you're totally right. Yeah. They're a trio. They're a trio, and they're a very strong trio, sure. And then they end up being, like, uh-huh. seven-person group, but it's still a trio. <laughs> no, and that's – okay, so, yeah, I guess. Side tangent for, for that. Spoilers. But like, yeah, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers for the Adventure Zone. But um, the – when I was researching, like, because I wanted to know, like, why do we have so many, like, groups of three? You have groups of three opposite, often. You'll also often find groups of seven is another big one in stories. We see that in 
the 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 Percy and Jackson. Heroes of Olympus. And, yeah. Yeah. They, so they, we have the seven go. Yeah. So we start with a group of three in the Percy Jackson books: Annabeth, Percy, and Grover. Like they're our trio. And then when you get to like the first two books of the Heroes of Olympus series, you have a two other groups of three. And then you end up being like, here's your group of seven. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that was cool. No, it was but. great. Such a fun yeah. fucking. Such a fun. My notes went away. So yeah, I love trios. Uh, since we just very recently recorded an episode on DuckTales, Huey, Dewey, and Luby are, are another trio that come to mind. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're a fun trio. They're a fun trio. And they actually would fall into both the... A trio that is essentially just one entity with three of them, and then also having three distinct personalities. Because, like, from what I remember, and maybe I'm totally wrong, but from my remember of watching the, like, original oh. DuckTales cartoon, yeah, and then the, in the comics, they don't really have super distinct personalities. They're just they're mm-hmm. the they're the the triplets, the boys. They're all together. They talk the same. They dress the same. They kind of do the same thing. Yeah. Here we are. And then in the reboot, they were given very distinct personalities and interests and behaviors. And I never find that way more interesting, especially if these are the main characters we're following. If they're going to be the same, we could have just had one kid. One little duck kid in a little baseball cap. Yeah, but it wouldn't have been fun. There's no dynamic there. Well, I don't feel like there's much dynamic when they aren't doing... Because those those characters that are like the, the trio that are essentially just one entity... They're never the main character. Yeah. You're not following the epic tales of the Fates or the Furies or the Grey Sisters or the Norn in Norse mythology or what have you. They're, there's someone that one – like in Percy Jackson, there's someone that the hero needs to encounter briefly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they themselves don't bring enough to the table to have a compelling story about them. Yeah, I get that. What are your, some of your favorite trios in, in uh, pop culture, Darren? Oh, okay. So – my very favorite trio, because of the time I was born and my interest growing up and how it influenced me as a child, is probably always and forever going to be Harry, Ron, and Hermione from Harry Potter. You know, that old folk tale that has no author. Yeah. But I think there there's a reason the fandom calls these three the golden trio, right? Like, that is that these characters... One, I mean, the stories is so influential. The characters individually, like, they mean so much to people. But together, they they could not succeed alone. None of, and and yeah. I know the fandom likes to joke about, like, if Hermione was a chosen one, Voldemort would have been defeated in a week. But, like, we, we know that's not true. Hermione is fucking great. She's definitely the most put-together one of this bunch of nonsense. But it's the motivation of, like, Harry's drive to be, like, go outside the box and get those things or ron weasley's just more practical knowledge of the way the wizarding world works outside of books that leads them to be able to accomplish so much like we see that in the very first story in sorcerer's stone we're from the u.s it was published as sorcerer's stone here i know it's philosopher's stone everyone can chill out yeah in in that one like when they get down into so they get into trap door and we see that it takes the three of them to get through it, right? It takes yeah. Hermione's knowledge of, oh, hey, this is Devil Snare, but it also takes Ron being like, hey, because Hermione's freaking out, oh, we need matches, we need fire, and Ron being like, you're a witch! Do something! His ability to, like, remain... Oh, you're a witch. Fucking, like, magic? What's your wand? Are you a witch or uh, I don't you? know, yeah. magic, maybe? Or, like, Harry being able to, like, Fly on the broomstick and get the key. The other two couldn't do that. Ron's chess game and his self-sacrifice for his friends. Like, yeah. not to say that Harry and Hermione wouldn't have made that call, but like, well, they can play chess? Fuck, fuck Ron can play chess like a motherfucker. Like, yeah. But I can like, tell yeah, Ron's, Ron's like a really good at it. Yeah, Ron's a tactician. He's a strategist. He's once He has all the pieces on the table. He's like, I got it. I know what you need to do. He's just not good at seeing, if he doesn't have all the information, he doesn't, He's not good at problem solving, which is what Hermione is great at. She can make connections. She can build on her knowledge without needing... So she solves the potions riddle, and that gets Harry to the end. They couldn't have done it alone. And you see that it time and time again in all of the books, in all of the stories, they cannot operate alone. They need each other. 
and I think that's what makes them like a really good trio in in just story in general or any story you have where there are three characters I feel like if you can't have a character whose presence whose absence would not impact the story then it's not a true trio it's a couple of best friends who are letting their other friend tag along yeah one of my favorite trios in Percy Jackson uh-huh and just like that series itself out of like I guess Annabeth Percy Grover mm-hmm. uh Jason Piper Leo and Percy Hazel Frank I'm gonna say I really like the dynamic between Percy Hazel and Frank yes that oh dynamic was so much fun to read in son of neptune mm-hmm. god damn did i fucking love that shit that shit was so funny i don't know just something about it there's something about like <laughs> percy being jealous over frank's shape-shifting powers even though they got the same descendant a father yeah, he's like, <laughs> he said because he's the son of neptune and percy's like i am poseidon why can't i do that why can't i do that what the fuck percy you can literally control the ocean Oh, Lit- oh yeah, you- right. Yeah. Not a couple miles, Percy. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Boats. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love it so much. Holy shit. I don't know. Just and yeah, Hazel just, just has about- her shit together. Oh, Hazel is fucking great too. And just like, and then like when we get to see them like interact with everybody else, like again, I also just love the seven as a group. They had such fucking good chemistry. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was written by like one guy, but it was still dope <laughs> yeah no it was rad as hell i love it uh, i i was thinking while i was talking about the the trios that you're like another trio that i like because i was going to talk about like harry potter and then thinking of like the trios and like witchy trios the witches from Macbeth are another like mm, weird sisters another... trope that are that are very much like the fates or the gray sisters like that's obviously oh, yeah. what shakespeare was calling on for that because more of the fates than the Grey Sisters, because their information they give to Macbeth is way more prophetic than clear direction. Yeah, oh, one hundred percent. But let me think. Okay, let me find it like an actual, like verbatim example of which is prophecy. Macbeth. There it is. Hey, thanks for listening, Google. Right. Yeah. <laughs> T- starts talking about M, types in or t- start, talks about Macbeth, types in M into Google. It's like, oh, you mean Macbeth? Yeah, I do. Hey, thanks for making my life think. convenient. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> I think. It, okay, so actually, this is super funny that I'm looking up the what they, where they talk about to each other. They give pretty clear directions, right? Uh-huh. And that very in the first scenes, they're like, oh, where shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. That will be the air, the set of sun, where the place upon the hearth, there to meet with Macbeth. So here's when, here's when we'll meet. Here's the time. Here's the place. Here's why. Here's the person. Very clear. Di- nautical yeah. miles. Yeah. <laughs> Very like, hey, yeah, um, we're just not going to dick around. Here's time and place. And we'll just, we'll meet there. We'll talk then. And then when they get to Macbeth, it's like, ha here's some riddles, fucker. Yeah, basically, they, yeah, they, they literally meet Macbeth. And they're like, all hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glamis. All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail Macbeth, thou shalt be king hereafter. Macbeth's like, bitches, what? I'm not Thane of Cawdor. I'm not a king. Do you, how do you know who I am? And then I think the the most weird, twisty prophecy thing they pull is on poor Banquo, who they say that he is lesser than Macbeth and greater, not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Because Banquo will die, but his son will go on to, like, sire kings. Yeah. His, B- <laughs> Macbeth is going to suffer and his memory will be tarnished, but Banquo will be remembered well. <laughs> so they're, they're very back and forth. And obviously that's what, like, Shakespeare was pulling on. He was pulling on, like, the idea of the fates and, like, the three sisters, the weird sisters is a common trope we see. But, like... Those three witches don't have distinct personalities. They're just called witches one, two, and three. Yeah. So they're they're very, very gray sisters. I think we were talking about Hercules earlier and how it's like those are basically just the gray sisters. I think it yeah. goes beyond the fact that they just have the eyeball thing. No, they also have one tooth. Or no, do they have one tooth when you looked at them? No, I think. I think they have multiple teeth. 
I th- their their mouths might all be shrunken in, or the, they don't. They, you don't see him sharing a tooth, but I would say it's the prophecy they give Hades. Like we talked about in the Remith episode, you're like these are these directions are too clear. Yeah, these directions are way too forward. Mm-hmm. But um, I was trying to say like they're actually they're not the Fates. They're the Gray Sisters who happen to like spinning thread. Yeah. Because the Fates would give you a, a twisty prophecy, and the Gray Sisters give you clear directions. We see it in Sea of Monsters. We see it in the original Perseus myth. They just straight up tell Perseus where he needs to go. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's not much more to say on that. <laughs> I think that I don't like about this whole power of three thing. Okay. It's that games are dipping into it, right? And I don't got problem when it's like a single player game and you got three people you get to play by, which like touching down on it grand theft auto 5 has three main characters you play as and that's a power mm-hmm. trio yeah kingdom hearts destiny, games they're all yeah, kingdom hearts games you got a trio De- destiny the game by bungie started uh-huh. this whole trend back when the first game came out where your party is three players three guardians go to. out you have to like you don't have to you can do shit solo but all up to three players can be in one party and i'm like that's fine i don't play destiny too much and then i play destiny 2 a lot (laughs) and i'm like yeah it's just me aiden and julio that's who we that's who played destiny with me essentially but Mm -hmm. then other games started getting into this whole trend and before that it was like you could have a party of four in like any game now fuck man i got four i got three other friends i want to play a game with but there's only three in this party Knockout City, I've been playing recently. That's only three. Warzone, hmm. Apex Legends, all of these games have only three party. And I'm like, I got other friends I want to play this with. This sucks. Yeah. That seems weird. That seems like a weird thing to have a cap on multiplayer at that low. Is it like a processing thing? Is it easier to do stuff if you no, only have As far players? as I'm aware, like, that's the thing, though, is Warzone has a game mode that comes around every now and again. Mm-hmm. Where it could be a squad of four. Huh. Yeah. And so I'm like, this sucks. What's that gaming experience like when you... Because you've, you've played games you can play with a bunch of people and then play oh, solo. Yeah. What is it... How does how does playing with just three... Is it, like, easier to communicate? Do you think, like, the... I mean, it's easier to communicate, sure. Because, like, yeah, we're all there. We're all three people. It's obviously mm-hmm. going to be easier to communicate amongst three than four or more. But mm-hmm. the thing is, is... Like, I, we recently have, like, outside of those, the other two that I mentioned, we have, like, people that come and go throughout. And sometimes I want to play Apex Legends with these guys, but, like, other people want to play with us. And I'm like, this sucks because we can't. And then we all just go mm-hmm. play Final Fantasy fourteen, which is an MMO. <laughs> we just go do something else. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. We'll just do something else. But other, like, I would like to play Apex with four people. I would like to play uh, Knockout City with three others. That'd be great. Do you think that Destiny started the trend, obviously, and then the other games are probably hopping on because that's what media does. When someone does something and it succeeds, everyone will jump on it. For example, for movies, see Marvel creating a cinematic universe and then DC and fucking Universal Monsters trying to pull the same thing. Yeah. So, but... Beyond the fact that these are just, like, most of them are probably just copying, this worked for Destiny, let's do it too. Why do you think, did it lend anything to the story experience of playing Destiny to be in just a party of three rather than four? Or how is it different than just being by yourself? Um, like story the only wise. reason I can think that story-wise is there's only three classes in Destiny. Oh, are you supposed to each be a different class? I mean, technically to keep in balance, but everybody plays Hunter anyway, so doesn't really matter <laughs> i'm okay, guilty of being okay. a hunter player they i mean destiny's gold not not being hunters all the, get all the free buffs essentially get all like the best shit hunters do which Aww. is annoying because i liked playing forlock it was fun but just mm-hmm. something about it but then um it really story-wise there was no reason for it mm-hmm. other than like yeah, yeah, there's the three classes. But, like, story-wise... Yeah, unless you are the You are, classes. like, story-wise, you're an army of one guardian. Story-wise. Huh. Every cutscene you're in, every time they refer to you, it's your guardian. Your guardian is the only... Like, in the second game, it starts off, 
all guardians have lost their light, which is the power that reincarnates them, that gives them the power. Uh, except you go to a shard of what gave you the power and ask mm -hmm. politely and say, hey, yeah, here you go. And you get the light Oh, you, you just ask nicely. You go up to it and your ghost, which is like the thing that like the travelers bestowed, which is what like gives you the powers. This traveler, uh -huh. that's this big fucking moon sized thing that goes from planet to planet and just cool. bestowing power on people and chose yours. And so the like bestows these people with ghosts. And so they don't remember their past life. But they're now just reincarnated with all this power. Huh. Uh, and your ghost goes up to it and just like story plot ensues and you get your powers back. I can't really explain okay, it better okay. than that. But it's just like I saw a video. It's like you, essentially I can. I saw a video where it's like, yeah, as far as I could tell, you went up to the sh traveler and asked nicely and he gave you your powers. I'm like, fuck, okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so then you're just like a guardian army of one, which like again like i don't in destiny i didn't care much because i didn't play it outside mm -hmm. of with me and aiden me aiden and julio that was mm -hmm. our three but just like but capping in other games all these yeah all these other ones just it's annoying i want to play with all these other friends mm -hmm. but i can't like um a game that, that i haven't actually played yet but a game came out recently it's called outriders now okay. that game it's got four classes you think that there's going to be four slots no yeah. there's only three. Oh, oh. not that i was interested in it to begin with but like it's still like dude you have four it's classes this is fucking ridiculous like borderlands another really popular series four classes to start i know two and pre-sequel eventually ended up with six but four classes yeah. four party slots that makes sense to me <laughs> yeah yeah, the destiny thing does make sense when you said that three they were, classes. That, no, yeah, three, three classes, classes, three party slots, whatever. Yeah, if you're if you're playing it and you're balanced and everyone's one, that actually I, that, I like that feeling for story because if you if you were to write a story like that, you're gonna have three different characters with different abilities. Like in the adventure zone, you have the human fighter, the elven wizard, and the dwarf cleric. Like they are yeah. different. They do different things. They complement. But yeah, in the games where you can't have those, and again, games, it, like, it's like they're just mimicking. Yeah, it, and I, I probably Warzone was probably mimicking Apex Legends because Apex Legends was the first battle royale in my to my knowledge that did the party of three, and then all other battle royales I've played since then have been a party of three, which no, sucks because be... the first two about like the first battle royales that I played before Apex Legends came up was h1z1 which is a really hard throwback because it's not even a thing anymore and that was a party of four PUBG, that's a party of four fortnite that's a party of four mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then that's huh. apex came out and everyone's like oh let's switch to party of three and i'm like no why <laughs> yeah I, I i do wonder if it's like a programming thing if it's like easier that somehow the experience is better when it's only three but it does just sound like they're mimicking the thing that was successful yeah that's what it feels like and so i'm like it's just rough because as i said i got more friends i want to play with but when yeah. we can only have three i'm starting like four or five different characters at a time yeah yeah i'm never exactly. finishing one of them no it's like it reminded me because we were talking earlier like oh games where you can have only three and in, in like all of the kingdom hearts games there's like the trio that is your group or there's a bunch of different trios right you have yeah in kingdom hearts one you're playing as sora and donald goofy are in your party you're looking for mickey so you have mickey donald goofy then you have sora and his friends so you have sora riku and kairi if you go yep. to you know games where you, you uh 358 days were two you have roxas axel and Shion. in birth by sleep you are aqua terra and ven and that's fine. And then in the games, like in Kingdom Hearts 1, or, or any of the games you're playing as Sora and you have Donald and Goofy in your party, you can team up with other characters in certain worlds. But you can still only have three in your party. So, oh, I want to hang out with Mulan. Bye, Donald. You can't do... Or, I bye, hang Donald. Out you're not healing me fucking anyway. Get the hell out of here. I was going to say, bye, Goofy. You can't do magic. But, <laughs> yeah. You're not healing me anyway. I might as well get some potions and hang it out depends, with For me, it depends on what character, like, is being swapped out. If I have Beast, then I'm swapping Goofy. I will take fucking Beast, yeah. Some characters but, don't. I won't take. Sometimes I'll do it a little bit because it's fun to hang out with my Disney friend. But then eventually I'm like... Uh, hey, Peter Pan's kind of cool. 
Yeah, it's like, all right, Ariel, it's been real, but I'm going to just have to have you leave now. Just going to have to get Octopus Donald back in here. Uh, yeah, your moveset isn't helping me. But in Kingdom Hearts 3, they expanded it so you could have up to five members of your party. So when you're meeting oh, these other people, you didn't have to awesome. kick anyone out. Yes, you're in, the, you're in Monsters, Inc. world. You have Mike and you have Sully, right? You're in Tangled and you have Finn and you have Rapunzel. You're in... Toy Story, you have Buzz and Woody. A lot That's of duos. Dope. It was kick-ass. I mean, because, like, yeah, a lot of Disney movies revolve around duos rather than trios. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Disney movies... Yeah, Disney movies are os- often hyper-focused on the foils to each other. Like, Buzz and Woody are a foil. Or, yeah, those kind of things. Um, Moana and Maui would be, like, foils to each other. Mm-hmm. Elsa and Anna, you would say they're foils to each other. There's a lot of that back and forth in those movies, yeah. which you do kind of see in trios. Sometimes you have two characters who are the foil and then the one character who's like the mediator in between them. But three, as I mentioned, Kingdom Hearts is because sometimes trios are not the best thing. Sometimes you do want to have all members of the party so you don't have to pick and choose your friends. Well, all of my Disney friends here. Yeah, no, I'm just... Or, like, in your case, with your multiplayer games, let all of my friends be here to play. Yeah, I want to play with all my friends. I can't. Mm-hmm. I want to have a team of fucking Valkyrie, Mirage, Fuse, and Octane. Give it to me. Let me do that. That shit sounds hilarious. <laughs> Give it to me. I want it. Oh, the fairies from Sleeping Beauty. That's oh, another yeah. trio. That is another yeah. trio. There, it's another Disney trio. They're very similar, but I would say they have more distinct personalities, albeit they kind of do the same thing. Yeah. They come out and they they help Sleeping Beauty vibe up a bit. Yeah. I do appreciate Meriwether for thinking quick enough on her feet to be able to find a loophole in Maleficent's curse. Like, okay, okay, she will perk her finger, but she won't die. She'll just fall into a deep sleep but she won't wake up unless she is woken by true love's kiss. Okay, that works enough. That's a, that's similar enough to the curse that we can weave that in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. And mm-hmm. then fucking Disney's Maleficent. What a great uh, movie. What, what a, a great movie. movie. One of, I love one of Disney. Angelina, Maleficent. Angelina Jolie's best. She's so good. All of her outfits in both movies. Just killer. So Power of 3. Power of 3. DJ, you got any more any more trios you want to shout out on our very special uh, trio episode? Burger King, Dairy Queen, and Jack in the Box. No That's McDonald's? Power of three. Uh, Are they I teaming said, up McDon- to take down McDonald's? Well, McDonald's is like not the burgers that I think of when I think of burgers, right? When I think of burgers, I think sesame bun, uh-huh. fucking like a thick old patty. And, like, toppings in the middle. And McDonald's just doesn't have that unless you get the Quarter Pounder. All, like, it's just not in my books. But the reason I say, uh, King, Queen, and their Jester. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. All right, there it is. I was, I was, you can't, it's a non-visual medium, but you, y'all couldn't see it. I was just staring at DJ, like, what? Why? Why did you, okay. Yeah, King, Queen, I, and I love Jester. and support you as my co-host. Okay. All right. I love when you took it. Fuck. I I mean, we can talk about our favorite trios forever because there are so many. I have the There's a good, there's a good amount. Yeah. And on uh TV tropes, there's the power of 3 trio and then there's just dozens of subcategories under that of other trios. So we can talk about I'm this gonna, forever. Like, I, I want to see that real quick. Power of 3. Let's see if I can find one that would like cuz I've only said like one, right? And aside from the one real uh, one, one I've said like one real one, and I just like okay. But yeah, no, the trope is called power. Oh, power trio. I'm sorry, power trio power is the trope. Power trio. And then I pulled up from power, power trios Troy? when That's I was looking it. at the weird sisters. Is the one like you know the witches amazing patron and guest of the show tim o'connor and i were talking about the owl house and he reminded me that you know witches tend to come in three so whoever this mysterious family member in season two uh we're recording this before season two starts by the way he was predicting that it would be their sister i was predicting that it would be their mother but his is like oh yeah three sisters 
What were you saying, DJ? I'm just looking at these. Wow, there is a lot of subcategories. So many. Because Let's you have... Let's check out masculine, feminine, androgyny. Oh. Naruto's legendary Sanin, Jiraiya, Tsunade, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Orochimaru. Big time, yeah. Yeah, I would say. Oh, Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke would be another trio. So, I don't really think of them as a cohesive unit. They're not. Because they, they uh, never fight together. I read through that whole thing. They never fight together. And when they do, it is not Sakura. No. Sakura is nowhere in that. They don't, at, the, at the end, though, don't they? The three of them, at the very, very end, for like a moment... But it for ultimately a moment, is they're standing side Sasuke. by side. For a moment, they're standing side by side. Then Sakura goes off to fight ads, and Sasuke and Naruto fight Madara. <laughs> and yeah, so, and then Sasuke happens, and Naruto fight trio. each other. Like that's it's not a trio. It's a trio, no, no. but it's not a trio. It's not a power trio. No, definitely not. Definitely not. S yeah, Soul Eaters, Maka, Soul, and Krona. Yeah, I also wouldn't consider them a trio, though. I know, that's what they say. Yeah, well, yeah, they, no, at I least mean, that's what they say. It's like after Krona, like, turned good. Yeah. I mean, briefly, sure. Again, it's for anime and manga. Let's see. Web I mean, I'm not surprised there's tons of anime. Oh, man. I forgot. There's a web comic that I read called God of High School. Phenomenal oh, yeah. webcomic. Highly uh -huh. recommend it for anybody who's never fucking seen it or read it. It's even an anime right now. The trio in that one is Mori Jin, Dewi Han, and Amira Yu. Mori okay. Jin, you got your Taekwondo fucking fighter, right? This guy is strong mm -hmm. as shit. All of them are strong. And like we get to see them fight together and where the webtoon is at right now, we're they're like, oh man, this shit is dope. And then Dewi Han is like fucking basic karate man and he is just good at it. And then Mira Yu uh -huh. is using a passed down family sword fighting technique. And it is just cool. the best. And when they fight together, there's no fucking stopping them. Maybe because Mori Jin's kind of a god. Not kind of. He is Sun Wukong. Well, it's God Like of high genuinely right? Sun Wukong. <laughs> okay. But they use the Korean name for it and I can't pronounse that. J Ch Seon Dong or something like that. I don't fucking. Know. I couldn't pronounce it either. So. Yeah, but it is. Oh man, so fucking good. And even in that, like, be, like the reason that, like, and like in that, there were just trios, among trios, because mm -hmm. it's a whole tournament style, and you had to like for the second part of the tournament, all like, the three like first, second, and third place all like got moved up to the next bit. Uh. Man, that was cool. Just a dope fucking webcomic that i highly recommend to anyone <laughs> nice nice so you would say that those characters are definitely like a true trio where they like they function tried and best true together. trio nice rock let's check out rock i'm sorry i just want to look at rock trios because i think it's fun yeah video games yeah that's for pokemon black and white black two and white two i don't know that one man i don't know any of these i don't know why i clicked on rock trio josie and the pussycats Crashing yeah. the boys. Sex Bob Bomb. Sex we got Sex Bob. We're here to uh, watch Scott Pilgrim kick your ass. We are Sex Bob Bomb and we are here to watch Scott Pilgrim kick your teeth in. One, two, three, four. Anyway. There it is. Thank you, DJ. <laughs> Physical, mystical, and technological. <laughs> That's a good trio. Superman, Batman, that. Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good trio combination. Cap, Iron Man, and Thor. Yeah. Big time. Kung Fu Panda, three each of the three movies villains. Okay. Uh, that's a weird one a to say. I, like they are they are a trio, right? Tai Long is the physical fighter. Or I don't remember the second movie all too much. And then Kai being the fucking mystical man. It was weird. That is weird. It's weird to say. It's weird to say. Oh, that's ben sad. Ten. Ben Ten's got a trio. Yeah. He yeah. Yeah, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin. Yep. I guess like well the original Ben Ten dynamic was Ben Gwen and Grandpa. Oh. Well, and then yeah. it became in the uh, Alien Force and Ultimate Alien. It, Kevin swapped out Grandpa. Steven I, Universe. I like. I was gonna say Steven Universe because you Amethyst Pearl and Garnet, and yep. then Steven is there. 
But you also, yep. I was thinking of the diamonds because there yes. are you have the four diamonds, but they're never presented as like in the series as like a cohesive unit. It's either you know white. The only time we see them ever working together is when they're the big robot. And we and we never see them, and that's not really them working together. It's working because together have, enough, I guess. But, but, but not really. One of the diamonds isn't there. Yeah, that's right. Like pink right. isn't there anymore. You have pink, yellow, and blue, and sometimes they're shown as like their relationship between each other. And then mm-hmm. you have white, blue, and yellow, and they're demonstrated as like that's the diamond authority. But yeah. so it's like these two separate trios that should be like and that's you know why I broke down. That's why Steven, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl worked better than the Diamond Authority ever did because this is a true unit. This is a true family. And this is a hot mess of people who needed therapy and never got it. When did Ron Stoppable get mystical monkey powers? Briefly. Briefly, he did get mythical monkey powers, and he was very upset by it because he hates monkeys. But it was also an amazing fucking episode. And he only had it for one episode. That wasn't a continuing plot point. Yeah, that's the, like, like they're a trio nonetheless, right? Kim, Wade, and Ron. That's Fuck a trio. Yeah, they are. That's but then a this one—that's <laughs> that, a fucking trio. And this, because I'm looking at—I'm still looking at the mystical, physical, technological. It's like Kim is the yeah. physical muscle, Wade with his gadgets. It's technological, and Ron has his mystical monkey powers. <laughs> like, hold I don't up, hold remember up. him having those. I remember the episode where he got them. Shit, did Ron keep the mystical monkey powers? Ron, <laughs> stoppable, <laughs> mystical. Monkey power. Yeah, because he gets blasted by a mystical monkey beam from four jade isles. And he gets martial arts. <gasps> he keeps them. Oh my god, I forgot. He fucking keeps them? He does them? keep them. He he channels the mixed monkey power in the episode's exchange and in the episode's gra- in the episode graduation part two. That's fucking great. I was looking at the video game oh, he, I like that yeah he actually ta- oh, yeah. he taps into the abilities in a couple different episodes but he gets it all in in those two that's he may hilarious have even, he may have even tapped into because it's got different he may have even tapped into the super strength in the episode gorilla fist when he punched the monkey set. so no that's actually right and i i that's so forgot funny. he kept it i thought it was that's like a temporary good. thing for the, so he is the mystical force fucking amazing i can't believe i forgot god i love kim possible and the thing that i never registered as a child is that she's from a town called middleton and we grew up in a town called middleton and i should have connected with that more growing up yeah we did grow up in a town called middleton this is our kim possible podcast right yeah man i'll fucking fucking watch kim possible (laughs) the last one i think i'm gonna bring up here is terraria Uh um which doesn't have a cohesive story really and it doesn't really actually have characters but it does have classes that you can kind of fall into which would be melee ranged and magic oh okay so you get that group of three again yeah you get that group of three and then like i guess with a magic of a with subclass of a magic with summoner so you can actually have four people which is cool i like that a lot that is all i'll bring up yeah, uh, we didn't talk too much about the Grey Sisters, but I did. I knew that you know the 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 char- the triple the trio characters is a big reoccurring thing in mythology, and I definitely wanted to do an episode where we talk about just threes and stuff. And I'm glad we got to do that today, DJ. Why? I did research on this, and I couldn't find a clear answer. So I best I think the best option is for us to just speculate wildly. Why do you think groups of three are so common in storytelling? Everybody has their two best friends. You're not wrong. And we just got like two people that they are like just like the closest to. And so they're just like, yeah, we're the trio. Like that's how it was for me growing up. I had Dalton and Aldo through school. And then after school, we grew apart and I grew closer to Julio and Aiden. Mm -hmm. So now Mm -hmm. that's my trio. Your trio would be you, Lucy, Kate. Absolutely. We are in fact a trio. And I am Yep, yep, that's not wrong. And not to say you don't have important relationships outside of that group. No, of like, course you don't. Have like, of course you have like, important. Like a duo, like me and Sky. Yeah. But yeah. The Power of Three witchy trio is... Power of Three is just like an innate kind of human 
thing. Yeah. And probably think... not, like, by any purpose, right? Like, if I had another guy that I was super close to and that was also super close to the other two of my group, I'd be sweet. And then mm -hmm. it would be a group of four. But then we'd be getting fucked over by <laughs> games again. You couldn't play the games again. No, you must only have three. Yeah. Two or three. If you're going to have two, if you're going to do a multiplayer game on PlayStation, you'll have two controllers. Three for other games. Four only if you're going to play Billy Hatcher. Four only if you're playing a Nintendo game, because they're always four player. <laughs> they are. No, Nintendo knows what they're about, and they've always been. Uh, a whole family's going to play together, y'all. Party Game City. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that Pac Man game? I do. That pa Dude, that Pac Man game was fun. And if y'all so don't know what we're talking about, it was the. Ghost. It was the Pac-Man bundle in with Pac-Man World 2 on the GameCube. Yeah. And uh, you had to have a Game Boy and the connector for it, and that's what Pac-Man played on. A Game and Boy, then the yeah. the ghosts played on the TV screen on their own little screen where they're going around the map trying to catch Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wonderful, and you as Pac-Man could experience. see the whole screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fun it's experience. Good experience. It was yeah. really dope. So what we're saying is more games need to let you be four players because there are more than two kids in a household often. Yes. Get it together. Or at least Someone get for it. when we were growing up, we needed more four-player games to play with each other. More. And I think, Davis, it sounds like it's true now. You're getting capped at three. We need hashtag more four-player games 2021. Yeah. I think that might be our first word hashtag. Okay. That's, that's yeah, what we right. Use it on for the, for the podcast. Rad. Okay. Well. Well, that's all I got for today. How about okay. you, Darian? Uh, I feel... Because I mentioned Skylar, I have to shout out another Power of Three witchy one would be the Charmed ones from Charmed and Charmed Reboot. That's a big one. That's fair. I, yeah, okay. That's a big one. I, I think I do have another one. I do have another one. Power of Three, and because I brought up Final Fantasy fourteen, it would be the three leaders of the three different nations. Because they yeah. worked together, defeated an evil, and then became the three, like, not maybe not the leaders of nations, but like... One of them's a leader of a nation, one of, and two of them are, like, leaders of armies, essentially. And I'm like, yeah, I'm into that. And that's all that's I got. That's tight. Nice. Oh, one thing we forgot to mention is, I guess, just... Or not mention, because it's kind of, you can infer, but, like, call attention to the fact that here is another myth that Percy Jackson does because it's a thing that Perseus did. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, thank you all for listening to the episode of Podcast with Poseidon. We really appreciate you spending time with us, just enjoying no, it. That's great. Thank you so much. Tell us about your favorite trios from mythology and pop culture. Hit us up on Instagram at Podcast Poseidon. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. You can send us an email. We'd love to hear what your favorite trios are, what they do in their stories. We're always looking for more media to consume. Heck more yeah. games for DJ to play with his friends. But more only games two for me them. to play. I know, right? But uh, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, thank you so much. We will be back on July 20th, and we will be talking about a character who's just... A true son of a bitch. Yeah. Guy's just an asshole. Mm -hmm. uh, could give Zeus a run for his money, I think. Maybe. Maybe. We'll I mean, it's one of the thing. few things that I will agree with Zeus on. <laughs> Big time. But until next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Podcast of Poseidon is created and hosted by Darian and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darian Smart. The show is produced by Darian and DJ Smart, as well as... Tim... O'Connor, the Crystal Con Man. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hain, and our cover art is by Audrey Miller. You can find her on Instagram at Bombshell Nutshell Art. Like the show? Ready for more? Support Podcast of Poseidon on Patreon. Just one dollar gets you exclusive bonus content. Find out more at patreon.com slash podcast of Poseidon. Can't spare the drachmas? You can support the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcast or by sharing us with your friends. Find all of our episodes and episode transcripts at podcastofposeidon.com. Thanks for listening. 